Meat Boy is back. Today we are making pastrami. And you guys better strap in because this is going to take over one month to make. If you are interested in doing it, is the end result worth it? I guess you guys will have to find out. I'm sure most of you are familiar with Katz's Deli in New York City, probably the most famous deli there is. It's known for its pastrami. I think they literally charge like $25, $30 a pound for it. And you know, you're paying 30 bucks for a sandwich, which is insanely crazy. The recipe that I'm doing today is what I've been able to kind of surmise as Katz's recipe. If you try to find their recipe, nothing online. So what I had to do was look at, you know, a dozen different pastrami recipes, try to figure out what they're doing. So that's what we're replicating today, the most famous pastrami in the world. Making the corned beef is definitely the most involved part of this process. We have to mix together quite a few different spices, herbs, seasonings, vegetables, boil them to make a brine with some honey and salt, and then pour it over the brisket. Uh, I'm making two briskets today. These are uh, the ones we have on Frankie's Free Range Meat, 100% grass fed. They're anywhere between nine and 11 pounds each. Uh, so first I'm just gonna cut open this plastic and get these briskets in the bin so they're out of our way. For the vegetable seasoning component, you typically want onion, carrot, and celery. I don't have carrots today, but what you could also do is just take a bunch of beef stock or chicken stock, preferably homemade, maybe from the supermarket organic, and you could add a bunch of that as a base for this. It's going to add more flavor. You know, since we already have all of these spices and seasonings and this, you know, beautiful brisket, I think we're just gonna let uh, the flavor of the meat speak for itself. Slice the onions in half. I'm using four onions for two whole briskets. And this is quite a bit of meat, so you guys can scale down all of the ingredients that I'm using by, you know, half to a quarter. Now this probably isn't enough liquid to cover all of our briskets, so we can just add more liquid. The most important thing is that we get the proper measurements of all our spices and seasonings melt it down into a base and then you can always add a higher volume to the, the brisket. The spices are fairly extensive, so by all means, if you don't have some of these or you can't find some of them, you don't have to use them. I actually have every single spice that is typical to corned beef, mainly because I already had most of them and I only had to buy one or two, but you, know, you don't really wanna go out and spend you know, $40, $50 on these spices that you might not use again. The recipe calls for one cinnamon stick, but I have ground cinnamon, so we're just gonna maybe do like a teaspoon. We want one teaspoon of mustard seeds. You could also just do, you know, regular mustard if you don't want to go out and buy mustard seeds. We want a teaspoon of black pepper. I believe the recipe calls for black pepper corns, but since we have the cracked black pepper, that's what I'm gonna do. We need eight cloves, and this is my least favorite spice. It grosses me out, I detest it. For some reason, I had it in my cabinet. Normally, I wouldn't include it in the recipe, but might as well. We want eight allspice berries. Uh, this is already ground up, so we're gonna guesstimate this as well. Want 12 juniper berries, two bay leaves. I have a bunch of quarter bay leaves here. That's about two whole ones. And finally, half a teaspoon of ginger. So the amount I have here in this cup is enough for one brisket. So that's the typical corned beef recipe. Uh, I have to double this because I'm making two. So I'm gonna do that real quick. So there we go, this is going in the pot. So this just gets brought to a boil to make sure to dissolve all of the salt, the honey, the spices and the seasonings. And then we gotta let it cool off and then we pour it on the brisket. What you could also do is crush all the spices in a pestle and mortar, blitz them up a bit in a spice grinder or toast them in a pan to bring out the aromatics, but I don't really think it's necessary because you know, if we heat this for you know five, 10 minutes, it's gonna do what that is trying to achieve. Everything's dissolved, so we're gonna turn the heat off and let this cool to room temperature, probably gonna take two or three hours. If you don't wanna wait for this to cool off, you could just throw some ice cubes in it. And that's that. So this is gonna sit in the fridge for about 10 days. We might flip this once or twice, but it should be good as is. So the brisket has been sitting in the brine for about a week and I just rotated it just to make sure the spices and seasonings are even, and we're gonna brine this for another week. Uh, depending on what recipe you look at, 
will dictate, you know, is it one week, two week, three week, four week brine? Do they boil it before they dry rub it? How long do they smoke it for? There's so much variance in these corned beef and brisket recipes uh, that we're just gonna stick to uh, the Katz's classic deli pastrami recipe and see how this turns out. So back in the fridge for another week. So I've been double checking pastrami recipes and I've actually found quite a few that will let it go for up to a month, four weeks. And there weren't too many that went much longer than that. So we're actually at around two and a half weeks right now uh, for the brining process. And we're gonna let it go another week and a half. So I'm just gonna flip this over one final time. And then when we come back to this, it'll be ready for the dry brine. We'll let it sit overnight and then we will smoke it for hopefully not three days, but that's what the recipes are saying. Our pastrami has been in the fridge far too long. I think it's been over five weeks now, but you know, you could go three, four, five, six weeks. Doesn't really matter. It's still doing its job. So real quickly, all I'm gonna do is rinse this with reverse osmosis water. Since we have to put a spice rub on here, we wanna get the old seasoning off. After I rinse it off with the water, I'm just patting it dry with a rag. You don't really wanna let this sit overnight unless you put the seasoning on it first because you know we spent all this time and effort to get this brined and moist and juicy. If you let the surface dry out, it's gonna get hard and crusty. We're almost there. The final laborious step is to make our dry spice rub. And for each of these briskets, you're going to need four tablespoons of black pepper, two tablespoons each of coriander and yellow mustard, one tablespoon of honey, I'm going to use the nature's glucose we have on Frankie's Free Range Foods, two teaspoons each of onion powder and garlic powder, and one teaspoon of chili powder. Uh, so for the whole spices, we're gonna blitz them up, maybe even blitz up some of this stuff just to aromatize it a little bit and combine everything in this bowl. Forgot to buy whole peppercorn, so I'm gonna be here for like 10 minutes cracking this. So we have our spice rub, we have the honey ready. What I'm gonna do first is take you know, a big tablespoon of the glucose on both of these, spread this somewhat reasonably. Flip it over. And we'll do the same thing with this one. Since we have to do four sides total, I'm gonna to try to eyeball this spice mixture into four portions when I do this. So. It should work out to enough to give the whole brisket a reasonable coating. Not light, not thick. And I would say if, if you don't have all these spices, coriander and black pepper are the two key flavors, in my opinion, in these pastrami recipes. Just to give myself some more room, let's take this one out to the smoker and I'll do this one off camera. If you don't have a smoker, you can just throw this in the oven at a low heat. It'll still be absolutely delicious, but smoking gives it the key pastrami flavor. I believe Katz's actually smokes their pastrami for three days. Uh, so we're not gonna go quite that long as, you know, the smoke flavor only imparts so much. The reason Katz's leaves their meat in the smoker for three days is because it's easier to do that than to, you know, smoke it for a couple hours and then move it to a different cooking area. Uh, so I have this on about 175 degrees, which is gonna be perfect for as long as we want. So the way I, I laid this is the fat side of the brisket, the bigger side, is closer to the heat source. I'm gonna keep these close together because they're gonna shrink. Hey, who's that handsome guy? So I'm gonna close this. The heat should go up to around 175, 180. And I will come check on this when I'm done cleaning my kitchen, probably sometime next week. <laughs> All jokes aside, uh, I'll check this tonight, which is gonna be in you know five, six hours. I'm gonna let this actually go overnight and then uh, we'll see how it is tomorrow morning. I'm not gonna take the temperature. I'm just gonna smoke this on a very low heat for a long period of time. And then when, you know, when I feel like taking it out, probably sometime tomorrow, I'll, I'll crank the heat up a bit to like 225 and we'll let it go for four or five hours to finish cooking. I guess uh, the last thing I have to do is 
pick up some rye bread from the bakery before we uh, finish cooking this. The cook time for this smoker has been all over the place, mainly because I haven't been able to pay attention to it as much as I should. You know, it ran out of pellets, it cooled off, I had to restart it. But in general, around seven hours at 225 degrees is what you're shooting for for the brisket. If you do it in the oven, it's not gonna have as much of a smoke flavor, but with the brine, with the crust, with the seasonings, it's still gonna be really delicious and taste like pastrami. And you know, this is one of the products that we hope to be able to make for you guys when we're in a new and expanded facility on Frankie's Sea Range Meat. Not only stuff like pastrami, you know, we wanna do sausages, hot dogs, jerky, all different types of smoked, dried products. Uh, that are really just going to be able to add a variety of delicious meat to your diet. So, let's show you guys this. It looks amazing, and there's a couple bare spots because I was flipping it with these tongs and, you know, kind of scraped some of it off, so tough luck. But, you know, if you ever see a picture of pastrami, sometimes the outside is like completely black. That's because when you use lower quality spices, like regular black pepper, and you don't grind it and aromatize it, you really have to layer it on. But if you layered on organic, fresh ground black pepper like they did regular pastrami, it would just be too overpowering. So we're gonna take these off, put them inside to cool off for an hour or two, and then we'll make our sandwich. Pastrami looks delicious. Uh, to touch, it's actually not really that hot, it's just slightly warm, but I'm gonna let it rest anyway. Pastrami is all cooled off, looks amazing beautiful smoke ring and don't expect this to be pink on the inside like typical pastrami because you know we didn't use that curing salt that is so salty and seasoned it tastes like candy the most important thing here is that you cut this pastrami as paper thin as you possibly can that's pretty good because if you cut it any thicker than this, you're gonna be chewing pieces out of the sandwich. So I picked up some of the best bread I have access to and bread alone does make a rye bread, but they put caraway seeds in it and I really don't like caraway. Uh, so we just have the basic sourdough bread. I also just grab my favorite brand of mustard and we'll do mustard on both sides of the bread. And if you guys have ever seen like videos of these pastrami sandwiches, they put a ton of meat on them. So you don't really have to go light on the mustard. Pastrami sliced as thin as we could do it. Still might not be thin enough to be honest. Makes it really pull apart tender is when you slice it super thin. That looks pretty good. Again, the pastrami is nowhere near as thin as it should be, but that's about as thin as I can get it without a deli slicer. I kind of thought I could get it thin enough with a knife because that's how they cut it at Katz's, but I mean, it's good, but like maybe it's because I'm carnivore and I eat so much beef. Like this isn't as good to me. Look, it's, it's, it is really, really good. That being said, as an Italian, I would prefer, you know, a little prosciutto, a little mozzarella, perhaps some salami ham, some peppers on there, a nice Italian hero. But, you know, if I put some Swiss cheese on here or something, I'd probably be singing a different tune. Oh, you did put mustard, yeah. It's on the sandwich, it's not on the meat. Let me taste it before you put me on camera. They may not like it, and I don't want to make a face. <laughs> Even though I have a fabulous face. It's, it's like earthy. That's so funny. You want cow? That's so funny. I think it happened if I'm cute. Why can't you just try it on camera? Because I'm already on. Already no, you're on. not. You have to move over. Okay. Hey. First time pastrami. Did you see this beautiful meat? Well, No, they've been looking at it for 10 minutes. It's delicious. Thank you, Frank. So I ate one half of the sandwich. Uh, we'll give the other half to my sister because I don't know if I can stomach that much salt. But no, this is definitely delicious. You know, it's something you guys should try out and make uh, if, if you really do enjoy that type of stuff. Otherwise, you know, hopefully we make this on Frankie's Range Meat for you guys in the near future, but you know, it's over a month of work, very labor intensive. I'd rather have some prosciutto. <laughs> Instead of spending fucking 
four weeks making pastrami. My only regret here is not having a deli slicer. It would really make a big difference. Or if I was just able to get the knife sharp enough and really shave it then. All right, so we have the professional taste tester here. Hi, you two people. Our pastrami sandwich. I don't think Gina's ever had a pastrami sandwich. Maybe she has, right? I think I have once, but it was... Yeah, she probably had it. It was not so together. good. I think it was deep fried or something. I don't really remember. Here we go. Just make sure to, to bite down because you can't slice the meat thin enough with a knife. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, see the meat is... Mm. That's why you have to slice the meat thin because mm -hmm. if, if the meat's thinner, you buy Ow. it and it just falls apart. But mm -hmm. how's the pastrami, Gina? Mm -hmm. You think it's worth taking a month to make? Mm -hmm. I don't know about that. Did you take a big enough bite, Gina? I think we'll keep our kids. Oh, that mustard's hot. That's not the mustard, Junior. That's the pastrami. Whew! Spicy. Angie has my hands on both his food. is very delicious. And he's single. And so... Please take my brother. I'm desperate. And so are you. And so are you, Jake. Please, he needs a girlfriend. Gina, you've been asking me to be on camera for like two months, and this is what you have to tell them, the same thing? And you're insanely handsome. All right, well, guys, we're going to wrap this up. <laughs> I think we've showed you everything about the pastrami. If you guys have any questions about the recipe, just let me know down in the comments below. Look how delicious uh, this looks. But outside of that, thank oh you guys for joining me. If you want to get the brisket, we do have it on Frankie's FreeRangeMeat.com, mm. and we have the honey glucoses. Mm -hmm. Well, on Frankie's Free Range Foods oh. 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 Like the video, leave me a comment down below, oh. and of course, subscribe if you haven't. Above all, if you guys can please share the video on social media. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, people.